Thank you for joining us here at Legacy Church Online. Our prayer is that you were inspired by the message and that you were encouraged today. If you'd like to help continue to give financially, you can do so on the website, or many others have even dropped it off here at the church. We appreciate your generosity. We appreciate everything that you're doing. We would lo also love for you to connect with us. Connect with us on Facebook. Connect with us on Instagram. Go to our website. Send us an email. However you can get connected with us, we want to stay connected with you. We love you. We thank you. And we cannot wait to meet with you in person again. God bless. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, let's stand and let's worship together this morning.
grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the water Holding back the seas Should I ever need a reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden died for me There is another in the fire All my dead left were dead beneath the water I'm no longer a slave to my sin in What it means to me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world
where you'll be I count the joy from every battle I know that's where you'll be I count the joy from every battle I know that's where you'll be I count the joy from every battle I know that's where you'll be like a river wash over me immerse me in water as deep as the sea well, hide me in love you healing embrace well, peace like a river Wash over me. I worship your majesty. I worship your holy name. Jesus, my everything. All that I am is
break out Oh, come now in power And cover this land You've done it before Would you do it again? Oh, Lord, send a revival Lord, send it now A move of your spirit Heaven break out Oh, come now in power And cover this land You've done it before Would you do it again? I challenge you right now to close your eyes And slip your hands up unto God And make a funnel Just like this Come on, make a funnel And I challenge you to call out God right now Say, God, I need you to move in my heart And I need you to move in my life I'm here this morning to celebrate my freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for all of those uh, all of those veterans who have gone on before us and they've given us a free country and they've given us a free democracy. But more important than that, I am so thankful for my salvation bought and purchased by the lifeblood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm gonna tell him and I'm gonna celebrate him. Come on, I want you to sing it again. in a revival Lord send it now come on ask him right now come on move your spirit heaven break out oh come now in power and cover this land you've done it before would you do it again Lord send a revival Lord send it now I'm moving The Spirit of God in my future. I need you, God. I need Him this morning. Hallelujah. I didn't come to just put a little cute show on, to put on my little red, white, and blue. Come on, somebody. I've come to put on the Spirit of God, to put on the whole armor of God, that I may be able to stand against that which the enemy is trying to destroy me on this earth with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe that, you agree this morning. I challenge you to give him a hand clap of praise, a resounding worship this morning. Lifting him up today, God, and thanking him. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we're nothing without you today, Father. We're nothing without your presence and your power, God. We surrender unto you today. God, what do you want to do in our hearts? What would you like to do in our lives this morning? God, that's where we're at this morning. That's where we're at this morning, God. And we need you today, Father God. I bless you and I praise you and I honor you. And I'm so thankful today, God, for all that you are and all that you're doing in our hearts and all that you're doing in our lives today, God. Move among us today, God, in ways that we've never dreamed of, thought of, or imagined, God. I'm so thankful today, God. God, that we can be the surrendered vessel today, God. God, that you would use a vessel, God. God is broken, God, as weak, God. God is as unreliable, God, as unfaithful as us today, God. I'm thankful today, God, that you would use us, strengthen us, God, and, and love others around and about us all through your purposes and all through your power. God, we thank you for it in Christ's wonderful and powerful name. Amen. Can somebody give God a good amen this morning? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You can be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord as our ushers are coming. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3 in the word of God. I'll give you just a moment to find it. Titus chapter 3. I was a jump started. I jump started on you and I am already there. It's uh, page 1951 in my Bible. Page 1951. The Bible says that Jesus saved us, verse 5, Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus saved us not because of the good things we did, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins and gave us new life through the Holy Spirit. One more time for your hearing. He saved us, Jesus saved us, not because of the good things we did, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins and gave us a new life through the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to say something to you this morning. We're on, uh, we're, we're launching a brand new series entitled The Search, entitled The Search. And this morning, I want to talk to you about the search for freedom, the search for freedom. I want to tell you, point number one this morning, that the past is a place of reference, not a place of residence. I've said this before. You've heard me say it before. You'll probably hear me say it again. The past is a place of reference, not a place of residence. Every time I remember something negative about my past, I may visit that space, but I'm not going to live in that space. Amen. I'm not going to stay located in that space. Praise God. I don't want that to be my uh, to be the space that I live all the time. You know, when your phone uh, when your phone knows where you are, you can search up taco places in and it's and it, and it asks you, "Do you want us to use your location?" Hello. Yes, I do. I want you to use my location because I need to know taco spaces here, not taco spaces in San Diego. Hello. Amen. I want them to use my location. Well, the past is a place of reference, not a place a place of reference, not a place of residence. I don't want I don't want God to try to use my past. Amen. I want you and 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 for him too. God wants you to be freed. Amen. He wants you to be freed from whatever ails you and whatever holds you and whatever binds you and whatever confines you. And I want you to be free. And let me tell you something. I would I wouldn't do what I do every day if I didn't want you to be free. Amen? I'm a pastor. I'm a leader. I, I, I preach and I pray. This is what I do. This is part of the things that I do, not the only things that I do, but it's part of what I do. And I, would, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do what I do if I didn't love you and care for you. And my heart's desire is to see others released from their personal prisons, a concept I'm all too familiar with. I'm way too familiar with the personal prisons, praise God. And I would hate to see you in this life held back from doing all that God has called you to do because you're stuck in the past. A lot of people, they live in that space, they're stuck in their past. They can't have a good relationship because they're stuck in their past. They can't have a good relationship with their kids because they're stuck in their past. And I would hate to see you. I would hate to see the opinions of those around and about you keep you from allowing God to make you completely new and completely free. Amen. That's why I could really care less what people say to me on fake book. I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me. Facebook. I, I apologize for all the trademarkers out there. Amen. You know, hey, you don't know me like that. Amen? 
Those who know me in my circles and, and those who know me and know my heart, they know that it's not the opinions that keep me moving, praise God. It's the spirit of God. It's the calling of God. It's the mission of God. And I'm trying to tell you this morning that whatever weighs you down and whatever holds you back today, I challenge you to surrender it unto God Almighty and allow him to make you free by the power of his blood. Amen? I'm not saying it's easy. Amen? It's not. It's tough. It only feels impossible. And it's a battle to break free from the chains that have bound you from so long. But I'm trying to tell you something this morning. It's better to come out scarred in the victory than to drown in the struggle. Amen. And I'm telling you, my scars are a healthy remind, a reminder that Christ is my healer. I remember sitting in a wheelchair because of my car wreck. And I had a fracture to my face. All of my ribs were broken on my right side. My pelvis was broken in all four places. And they said, we don't know how you're body's going to respond in the future. We're just uncertain. We tried to bolt some things back together on the backside of you. Come on, somebody. We tried to screw some things back together on the backside of you, but we're not sure what's going to happen. And I'm telling you, I felt prisoned. I felt imprisoned in that wheelchair because I'm a walker. I'm a talker. I'm a runner. Every now and then, I just can't help but just move a little bit just to remind myself of my scars and to remind myself of how good God has been and my scars are ugly but I came out and my scars are there but God brought me through come on somebody he brought me through hallelujah and now I'm stronger and now I'm wiser and now my fight is unbreakable praise God and sometimes you got to use what is loose to break what is bound uh, all I could do I was sitting in that wheelchair and all I could do was move my arms real big come on somebody I shook my leg until it hurt. Amen. I lifted my arms up and I, wa I, w I waved them and I looked weird. Come on, somebody. But I wasn't waving them to you. I was waving them to him. I was lifting up the name of Jesus. I was worshiping Almighty God. I could have cared less what your opinion of me was at the time. Had my little transfer board everywhere I went. Ducked it in the back of my little wheelchair as I rolled around. Come on, somebody. Amen. Trusting that God was going to move. Trusting that God was going to strengthen me. And all I had loose was my arms. And I was waiting for my legs to get free. Come on. I was waiting for my, my pelvis to get loose. Come on, somebody. And if God has done something in your life, you need to share it with others. Whatever he's loosed out of you. Your story can be the key that God uses to unlock someone else's prison. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why he tells us in Hebrews chapter 1, the latter part of that verse, the scripture teaches us, strip off every weight. Amen. It didn't feel good. I'm telling you, it didn't feel good to worship God until my legs hurt because I could feel it in my back and feel it in my pelvis. Amen. But I worshiped God anyways. Amen. And I was just lifting up the name of Jesus. It says strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And many people don't walk in victory because they're hanging on to the past. They're hanging on to that bad relationship. They're hanging on to that moral failure. They're hanging on to that, that situation, that circumstance. They're hanging on to all of its bitterness. They're hanging on to all of its defeats. They're hanging on all of it, uh, to all of its disappointments. And I want to tell you something today. You are not what the devil says you are. Somebody say a good amen right there. I am not what he talks about. I'm not the rumor that he spreads about me. I'm not the opinion of others, praise God. And Satan, he all the time uses your past sins and your past failures to try to convince you that you're not worthy of the salvation and the blessings of God that Jesus has already paid for you on the cross over 2,000 years ago. They are yours, hallelujah. You gotta walk in that. He tries to keep you so focused on who you used to be that you won't be able to become who God has called you to be. Amen. A lot of people, they stay in that frame. You know, after my car wreck, I thought to myself, man, this is terrible. I almost died. I need to live like I'm dying. Come on, somebody. I need to live like I'm dying every day. Think about that. What if you were sentenced? Or what if you were given? Three months. Six months. Three hours. How 
Would you live any different? You know, I want my dash to mean something. 1975 was when I was born. Some of you guys are like, man, what a, what a dusty old crusty pastor you are. Come on, somebody. Old timer. All the way up until whenever God calls me home, I want my dash to mean something. I want my dash to work something in my heart and to work something in my life. Amen. And your enemy will keep you chained to your past. He'll get you agonizing over what you could have done, over what you should have done, what someone else should have done differently, praise God. And he'll keep you focused on that. You can't ever get to God's purposes. And those painful memories will weigh you down and they'll prevent you from moving forward. Come on, somebody, if you can hear what I'm saying. I want, I want to let you know, but there is a bright and victorious future for all who will realize that there is great freedom in the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It was at the cross. I found Jesus. I didn't go to some light. Amen. I went to the blood. Hallelujah. I went to the source. Hallelujah. I didn't went to the good vibes location. Amen. I went to the presence of God location. Hallelujah. I didn't go light some candles. Hallelujah. I went to honor the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it says here in Psalm chapter 32, verse 5. It says, finally, I confessed all my sins to you, God, and I stopped trying to hide my guilt. That's a problem with many people today. Stop trying to hide it. Just know what you are and know what you don't have to go back to. Somebody come on. Amen. He says, I stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I'll confess my rebellion unto the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Hallelujah. You didn't free me. He freed me. Hallelujah. It wasn't the Pentecostal church of God that freed me. It was the Lord Jesus Christ that freed me. It was his word. It was his blood. And as we acknowledge our sin, God grants us forgiveness, and he removes our guilt because God is a forward-thinking, forward moving God he's thinking about your future hallelujah now I need you to allow Jesus to lead you into the best thing ever a relationship with him point number two point number two breaking free from your past pastor Mike I hear what you're saying I'm just trying to break free unto tomorrow I'm just trying to break free until this afternoon listen to me To release your past, you must first get rid of the feelings that bind you to the past. The anger, come on, the resentment, the bitterness, the hatred, the self-pity, and the abuse. This is where I stayed for a long time. I stayed in that frame. I was free, but I was walking a ball and chain. Amen, and I just felt like I was dragging this ball and chain. Amen, like the walking dead. I'm just walking around everywhere. And I needed to take authority over my feelings and my emotions and bring them into submission with the Holy Spirit's help. Why? Because salvation is not a feeling. Salvation is a fact. Hallelujah. It's a fact of God. What, it, what does that mean? Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he will save you from your sin. That if you call upon the name of Jesus, you can be saved. It's a fact. Hallelujah. It's not about what I felt in that moment. And forgiveness is not a location I visit, but it's a reality of believing in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I'm not ashamed. I'm not not ashamed to celebrate my free right this morning here on July the 4th, 2021 in the house of God. I'm not ashamed. Amen. To worship him on a street corner, on a bus. Come on, somebody. At a ball game, wherever it is that I am. Praise God, because it's not about the location. And salvation and relationship with Jesus Christ is the greatest way of life. I've tried a whole lot of others. They'll lead you nowhere. They'll lead you lost and broken and confused and frustrated. Next, you must bring your past with its sin, your hurts, your disappointments and your failures to the cross and lay them at the feet of Jesus. I can do nothing with this package that I carry around. I can do nothing with this, with this, you know, I don't care how many bags Southwest gives you. It wasn't enough to carry all my junk. Come on, somebody. Especially in reference for free. Somebody was going to charge me, praise God. 
laid it at the feet of Jesus, and through the one perfect sacrifice of Jesus' own life, Jesus condemned sin and set us free from its bondage. We are dead to sin. That's what it talks about, being baptized. I left all of that, and I washed it all down the drain through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My past is dead. My past is buried. Behold, stand, standing before you is a new man in the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, standing here set free to live a victorious life through Christ Jesus and his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not through some help, help, self, uh, I can't even say it, self-help books. Amen. Amen. But through the power of the cross, through the power of the word of God. The reason you feel weak is because you've not transformed your mind by the power of the word of God. Amen. you got to transform your mind. The power of sin over our lives has been broken. Our relationships to it ended, and our spirits are alive in God. That's what it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. It says, for God called you to do good even if it means suffering. Oh, oh, oh suffering? That's not for the American church. I call a lie on that all day. That's a lie. It's a lie from the devil for you to think, for you to believe that you are not going to be criticized a little bit for your faith. Criticized a little bit, persecuted, if I must say, for your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be persecuted and it will get worse. Pastor, I came here to hear the good news. I'm giving you good news. The good news is you will be persecuted for righteousness sake. But Jesus has come and he has defeated death, hell, and the grave. That's the good news. Amen? Amen? Praise God. That's good news. He says, Jesus is your example and you must follow in his steps. I appreciate Legacy Church. I appreciate the Pentecostal Church of God. I appreciate all of the Christian organizations in the world. But my example is Jesus. Christ is my leader. He is my source. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say it with power and authority because it's all we got. It's all that we have. He's our example. We follow in his steps. He never sinned, nor did he ever deceive anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. God is a God of justice. Hallelujah. He's a God of justice. He'll deal with your enemies. Amen? Oh, cool. Awesome. He'll do, God is on that task sheet. Amen. Vengeance is his. Two things that scripture says are God's, the tithe and vengeance. I'm going to leave those two alone. Come on, somebody. Amen. It says here, he always judges fairly. Fairly, Jesus personally carried. You see that? He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right because by his wounds you are healed. And when you realize that your past sins and your failures were the result of you being lured into the devil's snare, you'll grow wiser to his tactics and be able to resist his temptations. And when he sends you an invite, he sends you a save the date, you can let him know, I'm busy on that that day, loving on God and giving up all surrender unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm unavailable for you. Refuse to allow him access to your mind. Refuse to, allow, uh, refuse to allow him access to your will or to your emotions. Don't be sucked in to dwelling on your past mistakes or your current problems. You keep your eyes dialed in. You keep your eyes focused on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your fuel. That's your passion. That's your motivation. That's your end game. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 41. I love this. Verse 9, he says, I've called you back from the ends of the earth saying, you are my servant. I have chosen you and I will not throw you away. Oh, I felt something right there. I was around a lot of throwaway people. I want to tell you something. I had family who just wanted to disregard you, to just toss you out to drop you off like refuse. Come on, somebody. God will never drop you off. He will never walk away from you. He will never throw you away. He says, don't be afraid, for I'm with you. Don't be discouraged, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I'll hold you up with my victorious right hand. And there's nothing more powerful than the right hand of God. 
Hallelujah. Nothing more powerful than the right hand of God. Hallelujah. God created me. I'm his prized possession. Some of you are like, really? You sure you're his prized possession? I'm telling you I am. I'm his prized possession. He created me on purpose, for a purpose. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm his prized possession. He's searching for me. His spirit will never stop calling me back. Some people are transformed overnight when they surrender their lives to Jesus. It's just true. They throw their drugs out the window. They apologize to the people that they've wronged. They break off unhealthy relationships. They stop cursing, cheating, lying, and stealing, and they make a 180-degree turnaround. For the rest of us, it's a process. Hello? Any process folks out there? You don't have to raise your hand. It's okay. I'm not trying to incriminate you. Security. (laughs) Amen. Amen. It's a process, and sometimes the process of change is slower for most of us. While the new birth, Scripture talks about it, the new birth is indeed an instantaneous experience. Transformation is not. You remember the woman, the woman with the issue of blood, there was an instantaneous transformation. The wild man from Gadara, there was an instantaneous change of heart, an instantaneous change of spirit. But you also remember Peter, Jesus' disciple, right? Had a foul mouth and an attitude. I don't know anybody like that, but Peter was that guy. (laughs) And like we see this, we understand this like Lazarus. He emerged from the tomb still wrapped in grave clothes. And Jesus told those standing near him, he's experienced life, he's experienced the miracle of salvation, but he's remained bound. And Jesus told him, unwrap him and let him go. There's some people around and about you that you need to help unwrap. You need to get them. You are searching to help unwrap them and help them draw into a closer relationship with God. And there's some of us in the house this morning. We need some someone to unwrap us from our struggle with various forms of brokenness. Some of us may be addicted to behaviors or substances or others are emotionally crippled because of their upbringing. Still others are haunted by childhood drama. And a lot of times as Christians, our our insensitive, our, our insensitive, or our wisdom is insensitive and unrealistic. We just kind of tell them, hey, just get over it. Get over it in Jesus' name. Amen. Get over it by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we say, if you're a Christian, you can't struggle with these things. Let me tell you something. You may struggle, but you will overcome. Amen. You are more, (laughs) you are more than an overcomer through him that loved us. We're more than overcomers. An overwhelming victory is ours through the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, people are people, and no sin is greater or less than any other sin is missing the mark. That's what it means. It means to miss the mark. What's the mark? Perfection. And guess what? You and I missed it. All mankind, we have missed it. And we categorize sin as if we have a file cabinet that we can organize it. But sin is disobedience to God, disobedience to his command, disobedience to his purity and his righteousness. Hallelujah. That's missing the mark. And it's insanely crazy to me to think or believe that Christians don't stumble, fall, or fail. I know a lot of them, and none of us are perfect. Come on, somebody help me here. While I would love to see instantaneous change all the time, the Bible also speaks of both regeneration, which happens at the moment of salvation, and the renewing by the Holy Spirit, which is a process. It's a process. Sanctification is a process. I challenge you, get sanctified before God. Get sanctified. Come on, somebody. Get sanctified before God. Pastor Mike, I need to do a study on the word sanctification. Yes, you do. That's your homework for tonight. Not tonight. Tonight's a holiday. Tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow. Do it tomorrow. It's tomorrow. <clears throat> Finally, point number three. Jesus promised he would take us through the steps toward healing. He promised he'll take us through the steps. You may be a Christian this morning. You may be dragging around a ball and chain. You may still feel like, Pastor Mike, my mind is still broken. My spirit still feels broken. My mind still feels broken. Listen, God is faithful, 
And many believers who struggle with secret sin or emotional baggage, their problem is, is they sweep their problems under the proverbial rug and they pretend to be free. I'm free, I'm doing great. I'm free, I'm doing great. Uh-oh, 20 years later, relapse. Uh-oh, 12 years later, relapse. Uh-oh, six months later, relapse. And I'm not just talking about drugs. I'm talking about perversion. I'm talking about a hate-filled mindset. I'm talking about a spirit of being unkind. Kindness is a fruit of the spirit, so I should develop it and work on it. Praise God. Amen. And if you're still a captive, please don't hide in the shadows. Identify your sin. Recognize that Jesus has provided the grace to overcome anything that binds you. Pastor Mike, I'm dealing with unforgiveness. Listen to me. Stop nursing the grudge. Stop nursing it. You'll never know the true forgiveness of Jesus if you hold resentment in your heart toward others. Bitterness is an acid. And I promise you, it's more, it, it destroys more the container that it's held in more than uh, what it's poured upon. Amen. It destroys what's holding it in more than what you try to pour it upon. It'll corrode your, corrode your soul until you forgive those who have hurt you. And I get it. A lot of people have been traumatized by past experiences such as sexual abuse or bullying or poverty or family or breakup or rape or accidents or war. Listen, the Holy Spirit can bring supernatural peace. Hallelujah. He can bring a supernatural peace to your troubled mind and deliver you from the shackles of post-traumatic stress. Hallelujah, he can deliver your heart and deliver your life. How about sexual immorality? Oh, Pastor Mike, I wouldn't touch that with a 90-foot pole. Well, I have to. God bless you. I have to. I have to preach the whole counsel of God. Amen? I don't always want to. I'm always afraid to. I'm not always afraid, but there's times I'm afraid to. Hallelujah. But I have to preach the whole counsel of God. Listen to me. While society says that it's totally acceptable, any kind of sexual immorality that you ever want to walk in, I'm telling you this morning, the psychological damage caused by fornication and abortion and homosexuality and lesbianism and adultery and pornography is very real. But, but the chains and the chains of sexual sin are strong. But Jesus can shatter them when we confess our sin and we walk in a place of purity before God. That's not hate speech, that's love speech. The love of God. The power of God speaking into our hearts and speaking into our lives. How about occult involvement? The occult. Pastor Mike, what are you even talking about? A lot of people don't even know what they're walking in. Listen to me. Participation in any form of witchcraft, seances, fortune telling, idol worship, satanic covenants, disobedience is as a sin of witchcraft, the scripture says. Drugs and alcohol, they'll remain open. Uh, 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 Drugs and alcohol, they'll open the door of our spirits to demonic influence. You walk in and you say, Lord, sin, revive spirit let heaven break out okay when you open yourself up to getting drunk and doing drugs you are literally saying let hell break out in my heart let hell break out in my life let hell break out in my relationships and in my home Amen. That's exactly what the scripture teaches us in the word of God that the drug relation is is connected to pharmakia the same place where we get pharmacy The same word that we use the word pharmacy. I'm trying to tell you, it'll open up your spirit to demonic influence. And these formidable chains can only be broken by the power of Jesus. You may need to this morning. Renounce the devil, confess your sin, and embrace the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And never go back. Depression and grief. A lot of Christians are gripped by powerful spirit of heaviness. That's linked to rejection or linked to disappointment. Depression can lead to self-hatred, eating disorders, and even suicide. Amen. Yet Jesus offers abundant life and sustainable joy. Hallelujah. How about addiction? 
You may have fallen into the trap of using alcohol, illegal drugs, pornography, food, or prescription medications to numb your emotional pain. I remember this prison. Yet the Holy Spirit can go to the root of your brokenness and heal your soul and put you back together. Hallelujah. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Dishonesty and pride. We remain captive because we cover up our problems rather than bringing them into the light. And healing requires full disclosure as the worship team comes. 1 John 1, 9. But if, you see it right there? But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness or to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to cleanse us from all activity and action and response that is not of God. And then Jesus promised to send us the Holy Spirit. So you throw out all the trash, you throw out all the sin, and then you need to be filled with the power of God. Come on, somebody. You need to be filled with the power of God. That's what the Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 8 and 9. It says, and when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. And the world's sin is this, is that it refuses to believe in Jesus. Now, can I say something to you? A lot of people believe in Jesus and. That's a problem. There is no other gods. There are no other gods. There's only one. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Amen. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved than the name Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There's no other little book that's been written for you. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, hey. There's only one. The Bible. There's no other book. There is no other testament. There's no other secret book. Amen. Called the secret. That's off. This is on. This is all that's on. And we got to pay attention to that. Because if the devil can, he will deceive you. Well, that's just, you know, it's good. It's, it, there's parts of it that's good. No, no, no. There is nothing but truth or lie. Hallelujah. This is tight this morning, but this is right. Praise God. I, I got to preach it. Help or no help. Vote or no vote. Praise God. I got to preach it. I thought God convicted me of my sin by showing me my shame. But God doesn't convict us of our sin by showing us our shame. That's the devil. Scripture calls that condemnation. Romans chapter 8 verse, four, 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but walk after the spirit. Hallelujah. You know what the devil will remind you of is your past and your anger and your depression and your frustration, your disorders. And some of us have a list of disorders. Come on, somebody, if you know what I'm saying. But God, he won't remind you of your works. He's not going to remind you of your efforts. He's not going to remind you of your trying and your reaching or always coming up short. But he will show you Jesus. He'll show you Jesus because Jesus is your righteousness. Jesus is your way in. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the worthy one. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit will always point you to Jesus. He purchased freedom for all mankind long before we could worthy, long before we could ever be worthy, long before we could ever be fallen. He'll point you to the one who hung upon the cross, who went down into the grave, and he buried our sins, and he rose on the third day, and he lives forever to declare his righteousness over your life, and he remembers your sins no more. Hallelujah. Son of God. God doesn't look at our lives through the lens of what we did. He looks at us through the lens of what his son Jesus did. Hallelujah. I call Jesus. He's my advocate. He's my public defender because I ain't got the money. Praise the Lord. If you don't have a public defender, one will be appointed to you. Anyways. If you can't afford a public, you, you know. He's my public defender. The mediator. The man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Jesus was perfect and he was pure. He's always faithful. You, this morning, I'm trying to tell you, are a child of God. And with that comes benefits and authority. With it comes healing and purpose and blessings you cannot even understand or begin to fathom. And I'm trying to tell you this morning, do you remember when you asked God, you you asked God, you said, God, I want you to forgive me of my sin. And you couldn't do anything about your condition. It was at that moment he raised you up and he said, I will free you. I will set you free. I will lift you up. I will bless you. I will bring healing unto your life. He came and he raised you up, not because God, uh, not because God has a defective memory, but because God has a selective memory. And he's not there to remember my sin any longer. He remembers the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The search for freedom. Will you stand with me this morning in the presence of the Lord? God chooses to remember instead, not my sin, (laughs) not my inability, not my bitterness as the prayer team is coming this morning. Quickly, they're coming to serve, coming to love on you, coming to bring you strength and encouragement, coming to pray with you, to agree with you this morning. You say, Pastor Mike, I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I've never said yes to Jesus. Pastor Mike, there are some things I have not let go of. I, I have refused to let go of. And you, man, you, you, you spoke to me this morning. The Spirit of God has spoke to me this morning. It's speaking in my heart right here, right now, in this place. And I need God to move upon my life. I need to come out of this brokenness. I need to come out of this addiction. I need to come out of this fear. I need to come out of this depression, this anxiety. I need to come out of this sin. Pastor, I need to come out of this sin. Right now, right where you're standing, I want you to acknowledge. Don't hide it. Don't bury it. Don't sweep it under a rug. But acknowledge it and bring it before God right now. You say, Pastor, I need to pray over some things. I need to let some things go. I I need to give God some things. I need to bring some things under the cross. I want you to come right now. We want to pray for you. We want to lay hands on you. We want to engage with you. Listen, every one of us needs prayer. What's the Spirit of God saying to you? Pastor Mike, you, 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 you you, you may have been speaking to me this morning. I need to let some things go. I need to let some anxiety. I need to let some of those things in my past, I need to let them go so God can bring some healing to my heart so I can begin to move forward in His purpose and in His calling for my life. If that's you this morning, I want you to come right here, right now. Come on. I want you to find that. You, you got that search for freedom. I'm telling you that Jesus Christ will set you free. I'm telling you that by his blood, he will set you free. That by his sacrifice, he will set you free. You say, Pastor, I need to find freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's you, will you come right now? Will you come right now? Will you take a few moments? Will you acknowledge what the Spirit of God is doing in your heart and doing in your life right now? You say, Pastor, I'm broken in a thousand different ways, but I want to give it to Jesus this morning. Can I see your hand? Anybody? Can I see your hand? God bless you, sir. Pastor, I'm broken in a thousand different ways. God bless you, sir. Pastor Mike, I need God to move in my heart and move in my life right where I'm standing. If that's you this morning, can I just see your hand? God bless you, young lady. God bless you, young man. I want you to find a place to pray. We're going to sing a song. We're going to sing a worship song. You want somebody to pray with you? We would love to take a moment to lay hands on you, to agree with you, to call upon the name of God together, knowing that God will touch your heart and that God will touch your life, that the Holy Spirit will move expressively and supernaturally in your life right now. Would you come? Would you take a moment? Would you come? to the beginning can't control what tomorrow will bring but I know here in the middle is the place where you promise to be Not enough, less 
want to take just another couple of moments to call down revival in our hearts. Revival is not about something that God's doing in a church, but what he's doing in the hearts of his people. Amen. It's about what he's doing in the hearts of his people. And I, I, want, to, I want to allow God to speak to our hearts just for one more moment. Just for one more moment. If you need to go, I understand. Man, you got to roast in the oven and you, you're afraid it's going to burn. God bless you. Have an amazing week. We love you. We appreciate you so very much. But if you say, hey, you know what, Pastor, I just, I just want a couple more moments in the presence and in the power of God. I challenge you to get to that place. He is here. His spirit is here. His spirit is real. His, his power is evident. God wants to do something in your heart and do something in your life. And I challenge you to call down that spirit of revival in your heart and in your life. That spirit of purity, the spirit of guidance, that spirit of God. I need you more than I need anything else in the world. Can we do that for just a few moments? Come on.
Holy Spirit today, God, to touch our hearts and to fill us today, God, with passion and direction today, God. We're so thankful for all that you are, God, all that you're doing. We bless you and we praise you and we honor you and we lift up the wonderful and the powerful and the life-giving, changing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we do it one more time? Can you celebrate him one more time? Come on, can you celebrate him one more time? God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you so very much. Happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. I pray that your barbecue just goes off with a stellar bang, okay? And uh, that you're able to find some fireworks, all right? If nothing, I guess you could watch some fireworks on television. I I think they've got fireworks on television for those of us in our area. Amen. But God bless you. Have an amazing week. We appreciate you so, so, so very much. Shake hands, be friendly, love on somebody, encourage somebody this week. God bless you.